and I'm going to get into the 23 must-know tips and tricks for the DJI Mini 2 SE. Hello beautiful internet family, my name is Dan Davis and I'm Australia's number one ranked drone YouTuber and I'm very excited today to check out the newly released DJI Mini 2 SE. If you have just picked up the Mini 2 SE then this video is perfect for you because I've got some really cool tips and tricks in this video, a lot of stuff that you might not know and if you're trying to figure out how to navigate the DJI Fly application then this video is perfect because it's going to break down all the different menus and show you how to get the most out of your brand new Mini 2 SE. And the first menu is called the flight menu. Now it's not necessarily a menu that you click into, it's basically when you launch the drone, your controller's connected, everything's ready to go, you get the video feed straight away with the record button, the map in the bottom left and all of that sweet information. This is what I call the flight menu because there's a fair bit in here that you probably don't know. And uh, we're gonna start off with the first tip, tip number one in the flight menu. It's called the attitude indicator compass. Now I've referred to this as a radar in the past, but I've done some more research. It's referred to as an attitude indicator compass. Now I have done a video on the Mini 3 Pro, which dives into this a little bit more. So go and check out that video if you want some more information. But this is a key thing to check out. Basically, all you have to do is click on the map icon in the bottom left corner, and then you click on that little compass icon, and it will bring up the compass in the bottom left corner. This compass interface is actually really interesting because there's a lot to it. It's not just a basic compass. As you can probably see as I'm moving around, it's actually changing the orientation of the compass so you actually know which way north is if you really needed to know that. But it is definitely more than a compass because you can change the focus of the actual main point in the middle there. So you can either have the drone as the middle point or you can have the controller as the middle point. Now, regardless of what mode you're in, you're going to be able to see where the home point is and you're also gonna be able to see where the controller and the drone is. Now, the really cool thing about this is you can actually see the orientation that the controller is facing. So it goes from a blue kind of circle when you're not facing the drone to then a green circle when you are facing the drone. So the thing that's really cool about this is if you want to improve your range, the most important thing is that you're actually facing the direction of the drone. So that simple little indicator that lets you know, okay, you're green now, you're ready to go, is really good because you know you might be facing the wrong direction you might not actually know where your drone is so that's really handy to know and um, definitely something that you need to keep an eye on because that orientation will make a big difference firstly to the range but also so you know where you are in relation to the drone it makes it easier to have a safer flight the other thing that you get to see with this compass is basically how the drone is operating in different conditions so depending on how much the drone is trying to counteract the wind will let you know based on that little kind of bar down the bottom that moves, it will let you know which way the drone is flying to counter the wind. So if the wind is hitting you on the left, then you'll actually be able to see that the drone is trying to counter that. So that will let you know with that indicator in the bottom left. And if the drone's too far away for you to see those little subtle differences, then it's actually gonna be great information to have at a glance because you're gonna know how much wind you're trying to battle, what way the drone is getting pushed, if there is a lot of wind and yeah, just a really cool thing. Like I said, I've got more details on my other video, but this is a really cool piece of information to get your head around. Now, tip number two is the map interface, which you saw right at the beginning. You can basically go from the map interface into the compass. The map interface is typically the first thing that you'll see and it will just have an icon in the bottom left. You tap on it to bring up the smaller heads up display. Now that's a really handy thing to have. And then you can press the minus or the plus in the top right corner of that little map interface just so you can either zoom in or zoom out uh, depending on what's relevant to you and then you can press on the map itself and bring it up to the large map if you really want to see the flight path you've gone on where you are in relation to certain things and just to give you some more information at a glance but it is nice to just have it as that small heads up display in the bottom left corner just for some more information if you don't want to use the compass then the map is a really nice interface to have as well. So now for tip number three, this is the pre-flight checklist. Now it will depend on what stage you're at with your drone. If it is flying already, then it's gonna say something different. It might say like in flight, for example. If you've got errors, then it might say something different again. But at the moment you'll see in the top left corner on the right hand side where it says 
end mode and then it says take off permitted. Now if you press where it says take off permitted, again that text might be different for you, but that will actually bring up the pre-flight checklist, which is a really handy interface. Now it doesn't give you too many options here, but you can adjust the auto return to home altitude, the max altitude and the max distance. Now this is great if you were learning to fly, maybe you wanna fly in a little field that's local to you. You can then limit your altitude and your distance just to make sure that you're just getting used to the drone in a contained area. So that's a really good way to do that. You can also limit your distance if you don't want to fly too far. Uh, you can then max out your distance if you wanna go a bit further again. But the auto return to home is really important here. You need to make sure that you're at least 80 meters to 100 meters. Because if you think about it, if you're taking off from a, a lower altitude, and then your drone's flying, and then it's automatically gonna return, let's say at 40 meters. Maybe the buildings are higher than 40 meters in relation to where you launch from. So you just gotta keep that in mind. That's why I go with 80 meters to 100 meters, then you're definitely gonna clear whatever's in the way if it does go into that return to home mode. Tip number four is the battery information. So in the top right corner, you'll see that percentage there. So at 63%, I can press on it and it will give me some really important information. Now, if the drone is on the ground, you won't get any information at all. The drone actually has to be in the air flying. But once the drone is flying and up in the air, you can then press on that percentage and it will bring up a few pieces of key information. So you've got how long until it's gonna to return to home, you've got how long until a force landing, and then how long until battery depletion. So battery depletion, you do not wanna to get to, that's when it's like just gonna fall out of the sky. Force landing is when it's gonna, as the name suggests, force itself to land. So you wanna make sure that you get back well and truly before that point. I always like to bring the drone back at about 30%, have it close, local, fly a little bit more, and then land around 25%. It's completely up to you, but just that's probably the safest way that I've found myself using the drone. But this is a really handy, again, at a glance piece of information through the flight menu, and that's tip number four. Tip number five is related to the digital zoom, which is one of the cooler new features, I guess, of the Mini 2 SE. If you've got a previous drone, like maybe you had the Mini SE before or something else, they don't all have digital zoom, so the Mini 2 SE does have digital zoom. You can go three times digital zoom in 2.7, k and four times in 1080p now you can just press on that little one times on the left hand side of the record button you can press it and it will take you between the different zooming points so it will go one two and then it will jump to four or it'll go one two three but the thing that's really cool is if you press and hold on that and then drag your finger down and up it will actually let you know the different kind of zoom lengths and it will allow you to kind of get a bit of a smooth zoom between the different zooming points. Digital zoom is a really cool option. It does definitely decrease the quality a little bit and it's not always usable. But if you wanna play around with that digital zoom, it's nice and easy to make it work for you. And now tip number six is in the bottom right corner. It will probably be an auto mode for you, but if you press on pro, that's gonna unlock even more options for you. You can play around with the ISO, the shutter, you can see a few things in real time as you're adjusting that. But then you can also go in and change the white balance. You can change the resolution through here and see how much storage you've got on your SD card. So this is really cool just to kind of play around with and get more out of the image. Um, later on when I get into the camera options, I'll show you some more key pieces of kind of information that you can utilize when you are in the pro mode just to get the most out of it. But this is a really cool one. Just make sure you play around with the pro mode because you will definitely get a lot more out of the drone if you play with that and don't just leave it in auto all the time. If you are a brand new pilot and maybe the Mini 2 SE is your first drone, then you're probably feeling quite terrified to fly your drone. I was in the exact same position. I know how anxiety provoking it can be. I know how it can be quite overwhelming to even know how to use the drone. So if you are feeling a little bit nervous, then definitely check out the Fearless Drone Academy. I'm the course creator over there. It's the ultimate online drone course for beginners. Got everything you need as a beginner drone pilot. And if you use the code DANSTUBE, you can save some money on the course. So go and check that out if you are new in this space. It's definitely well worth your time and well worth your money. And if you've got a friend that's maybe just starting out in the drone space, then definitely let them know as well. We're now gonna move on to the safety menu. And this is located in the top right corner where you see those three dots. If you tap on the three dots, it will take you straight through to the safety menu. And now for tip number seven, I've got the flight protection. So this is the section here where you can see max altitude, max distance, and auto return to home altitude. You can also update the home point here as well. Um, but this is just if you don't wanna go into that pre-flight checklist. This just gives you, again, information to see. If you do want to adjust the altitude, the distance, and the return to home, you can access it via this safety menu here. Tip number eight is the battery information, which is just a little bit further down 
down on the safety menu. And this is kind of like the advanced battery information. It lets you know how many cycles the battery has gone through. It shows you the health of the actual cells. So if you've got damaged cells, this is where it's going to show you that information. And it shows you some other key pieces of information as well. So it is good to just jump in here occasionally just to see how your batteries are going. And now tip number nine, I do have a whole video on this one on my channel, but it's basically how you can fly in no fly zones. So you actually have to request this and the process has slightly changed here, but I've got my full video over on my YouTube channel. It's um, really, really cool to see. So basically any drone under 250 grams in Australia, this is, if you are within a no fly zone, like near an airport, for example, you can still request to fly in that area if the drone's under 250 grams. So you can basically unlock geo zones. So now the process is different where you have to go to the DJI website, go to support, go fly safe, unlock a zone to submit your unlocking request and then it will link up and then you can unlock that area once it's been approved. It doesn't take long at all but that process has slightly changed now from when I did the video but definitely something to look into. And if you scroll down a little further on the safety menu you're going to stumble across tip number 10 which is the advanced safety settings. So a few of these settings just need to stay as default. It's good to know how they all work though. So basically if the signal's lost by default, it will return to home. But if you want the other options for it to descend or for it to hover, you can select those, but I would not recommend those. The return to home is probably the safest one to go for, especially if you're making the return to home altitude 80 to 100 meters. And then you've got the emergency propeller stop. So it shows you how to do that in case of an emergency if something's going on you can kill the motors and the drone will basically land and smash on the ground somewhere so make sure that you've got it in emergency only you don't want it to happen at any point but it shows you how to do it there um, and that's if you ever do need to kill the motors for safety reasons and then a little bit further down on the advanced safety settings you do have the payload mode so this is if you're attaching like propeller guards you know any add-on like 3d printed thing if you want to mount something onto your drone for example in the past i've actually mounted a 360 degree camera to a larger drone which was the mavic pro so check out that video because it's actually really cool 360 degree video you can literally interact on your phone turn around see what the drone is basically seeing from on top of the drone with a 360 degree camera so that's a really cool one that's an example of when you would enable the payload mode if you've got an additional payload on top of the drone or propeller guards or anything like that that's where you would find the payload mode option and then if you go back to the safety menu and scroll right down to the bottom you've got the option for find my drone now this is if you ever lose your drone if it crashes into a tree anything like that you can basically see the last point that it was receiving a signal and and then from there you can press on the start flashing and beeping just in case you've got close to the location you still can't see the drone then it's going to start flashing and beeping for you to hopefully pull your attention over somewhere if you don't like this map interface you can also use other maps uh, there's apple maps and google maps so it just gives you some options if you have lost the drone definitely check that out that's tip number 11 and that's the final tip in the safety menu but i've got a bunch more tips coming up i do have some really cool bundles some drone bundles over on the d1 stores website i have an exclusive drone bundle for the mini 2 se so this is a really cool bundle over there go and check that out that will be linked below but i've got a bunch of other bundles if you want to check those out for like the mini 3 pro the mavic 3 air 2s there's some really good bundles so go and check that out and just reach out to sales at d1 store.com.au if you do want like a unique bundle if you want a few things added in reach out to them and they'll be able to help you out just mention dan's tube and uh, you'll get the best saving that they can for you and now we're going to move on to the control menu which is on the right hand side of the safety menu again you can access it through the three dots on the flight menu and then click on control menu. Now tip number 12 is the gain and expo tuning. This is really handy. You can play around with the your smoothness. You can play around with the expo. You can play around with the gimbal controls and you can change it for each mode, regardless if you're in the normal mode, the cine mode or the sports mode. You can play around with all these settings and it's a lot of fun because you can get a lot more smoothness if you're looking for those nice kind of panning shots for a horizon. You can adjust the your smoothness. If you're looking for some smoother gimbal movements, then you can play around with that as well i would suggest just playing around with it seeing what feels right and you can always go right down to the bottom and reset the settings worst case scenario if you can't remember what it was set at so i would just suggest playing around with it until you find the sweet spot that works for you and you can play around with all three different modes so the normal the cine 
as well as the sports mode. So make sure you play around with it and find the right balance for you. Moving on to tip number 13, and this is how you enable the FPV mode. It's definitely a worthwhile thing to play around with. By default, it's on the following mode, and this will basically give you really smooth movements, and it follows the movement of the drone, the gimbal will, just to give you those nice smooth movements. But if you do want to have some more maybe fast pace movements, maybe you want it to feel a little bit more like an action scene, then the FPV mode will make it look more dynamic because it will basically follow the movement of the drone now. So the camera system will actually bank as the drone starts to turn and bank. The camera system will bank with it and it will create a very unique rolling effect as you're turning corners. So definitely play around with the FPV mode. I think it's a really unique feature, and especially if you want to add it into another clip, it just adds some more I guess of an action sequence, something slightly different that's nice and easy to enable. And it doesn't make the drone fly any differently as well, which is cool. It's still the exact same experience. It's just the gimbal will kind of roll with the movement of the drone to give you that cool effect. And our tip number 14 is just below the FPV mode. It's called allow upward gimbal rotation. This is a big one that's for some reason not enabled by default. Uh, but by default, you can't go any higher than zero degrees. It's just locked at that point. But if you do enable the allow upward gimbal rotation, then you have more range of motion so that you actually can look up higher. So it gives you the option of looking up even higher. You get 20 degrees of additional movement to look up higher. So for example, here, the drone's just on the floor, but it allows me to look up at the trees. So if you are flying relatively low to the ground and there's something above you that's really cool, I would definitely enable that because it allows you to look up and create another unique kind of dynamic look to your shots. So definitely play around with that. I just have that enabled by default because I think it's handy to have that extra range of motion. But that's number tip 14. And now tip number 15 is the button customization. This is a really handy one. You have a few options here. You can press the FN button once or you can press it twice and you can program two different functions here. So you can do a few different things. You can recenter the gimbal, toggle the map, you can change it between follow and FPV mode. You can open up the camera settings. There's a bunch of different options here. I do love the camera settings option. I find that to be a really handy one. The gimbal, like the recentering of the gimbal can be really good, especially if you're flying up above something, you can press it. The camera will look directly down, get that cool top down perspective, press it again, and it's looking up so that you can fly away. So that's a cool one. The camera settings is a cool one. And if you use the FPV mode as well, then maybe that's a cool one to have for you just so you can switch quickly between the two modes. Um, but play around with the button customization and see what feels right for you. So we're moving on to the camera menu now, which is on the right hand side of the control menu. And we're moving on to tip number 16. And this is relating to the video subtitle. So I've had a few people reach out to me and say, why do I have text on the screen of my videos? Like when I'm recorded a video, get home, put it on the computer, why is there text on my screen? Now that is relating to the video subtitles. So if you put it in an editing suite, you can remove that. Um, but if you're the type of person that just wants to film and then show someone on a TV or send it to someone or whatever, you might still have that text. So if you don't want that, just make sure that you disable the video subtitle straight away. And now tip number 17 is the histogram. I would definitely recommend enabling the histogram. And this is something that partners up nicely or complements the pro mode, which I mentioned tip number six. So the histogram will actually let you know how overexposed, underexposed, how much I guess brightness and darkness is in the image. And as you're adjusting your parameters here, you're gonna see that graph change in real time. So have a look online how to properly read a histogram. This is a handy at a glance piece of information just to make sure that you've got the right shot, you've got the right exposure and things are looking nice before you get home, put it on the computer and then realize uh, it wasn't actually good enough. And then tip number 18, another one that complements the pro mode and the histogram is the overexposure warning. So you can see as I'm adjusting the shutter speed here, we can see that things are getting way too overexposed. So you will occasionally still have like clouds that will be recognized as overexposed because they're very white typically. So, I mean, that makes sense, that's fine, but you're just looking for a really natural image here. So as you adjust your settings, the overexposure warning just lets you know if things are overexposed. And now tip number 19 is the grid lines. The there are a few options here. You get a kind of diagonal triangle looking one, which is kind of interesting for the FPV mode. I don't find I use it for anything else. You have that center point and then you have the rule of thirds. Probably the best one would be is just leaving the rule of thirds on. It allows you to frame your shots a little bit better, makes it a little bit clearer to see where 
things are in the thirds as you're capturing something, something off to the left in the center, in the middle, it lets you kind of know at a glance again how things are framed. So I'd highly recommend that one for tip number 19. And now moving on to the transmission menu, which is on the right side of the camera menu. And we're gonna move on to tip number 20 now, which is how you can view interference. So by default, it should just be on dual band auto, which is a great rule of thumb, just leave it on that, right? But if you're having issues, this is where I'm gonna explain how to make it work with tip number 21. But for tip 20, this is how you just view the interference. So the drone has to be on the ground. You can't be flying to see this, but if the drone is stationary on the ground, you can see all the interference in the area. You can go between 5.8 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz just to kind of see what's going on in the area and show you how much interference is going on. And then if we go on to tip number 21, this is how you can manually change the channel. So if you get a lot of interference, you can now manually change the channel. So you just literally go to channel mode, press on manual, and then you can press on that little white rectangle and drag your finger, press and hold and drag your finger. And that will allow you to drag between the different kind of channels and uh, change where you want the drone to focus on if there is a lot of interference at one end. This just allows you to do that. But rule of thumb, leave it on dual band auto. You will pretty much be fine all the time. And now we're going to move on to the about menu, which is on the right hand side of the transmission menu. This one doesn't have too much going on. You can adjust the name. You can see your model. You can see what, I guess, firmware version you're up to, app version you're up to, all of that stuff. But this is how you can manually check for updates. You just press that blue text, check for updates, and it will let you know whether there are some updates and then you can update it from that interface there. And I've got a bonus tip for you now. This is tip number 23. It's relating to device management. So if you go back, it will bring up the interface to show you what drone you're using. It will show you if there's an update in the top left corner. And then you can press on profile, navigate through this menu here, choose the drone that you want. And then this is where you can actually see the flight distance and the flight time. This is really handy information to have at a glance, especially if you do wanna sell your drone privately later on, you can see the distance and the time, the flight distance and the flight time. So really handy to know where to find this. But that's the end of this video. That's my 23 must know tips and settings for the Mini 2 SE. Like I said before, you can pick up a really cool exclusive drone bundle for my subscribers. That's through the D1 store, so that will be linked below. So check that out. And I hope this was helpful. If you've got any other tips and tricks and settings and whatever else, let us know in the comments below. Let's start talking down there. And I will chat to you in the next video. I appreciate all the amazing support and have a fantastic day. Peace.